My name is Dino Scala. I will be your town moderator for the next couple of hours. Uh, would you please all stand and lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? Fire Chief Todd Mason. I believe the Lord is my life, 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 Let us pray. Almighty God, be with us as we come together as a community that seeks only that which will benefit the needs of our town of Wakefield. As we discuss the war and articles presented to us, may we respectfully listen to those who speak. Prevent us from being blinded by refusing to see the benefit of each article proposed. Do not let our ears be deaf, but may we listen and reflect so that our vote will be for the common good, not made because of selfishness. Make us good stewards of the many blessings we so upon us, we make this prayer in your name, in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to let you sit just yet. One more time. We're going to sit here. We're going to sing the national anthem. It's going to be led by a Paul Winkler. And I assure you, this will be live. <laughs> Okay, I expect you all, I expect you all to join in because this is our national anthem, not mine. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last leaving, whose cross stripes and Stars through the perilous fight over the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets spread clear the long arms bursting in air gave proof through the Setting, some people won't need the microphone, but if you could uh, wait for them to come up with the mic. 
Uh, next is our town clerk, Monique Wood. Uh, Monique has been with us, I found out, since May of 2008. And she's making the decision not to run again. You will not see her name on the ballot. Uh, she was with us at the beginning of 2008. As you know, we had a pretty heavy election in 2008. And she just weathered the storm in the, in the latest election that we had, which was another very big election. Uh, been at my right hand uh, side for quite a while for those for those pretty tense moments that we had, but we did get through it. Uh, what's going to be a, a shame to see her go. Um, hopefully, you'll, you'll stay involved with some kind of issues or any kind of political thing you want to that's a little, maybe a little less stressful for you than, uh, than that position. I, that brings up a point with. Uh, I want to stress to you folks that I found out today this hasn't happened for years. We have several people, for example, for this position running for this position. We have four people, all very qualified, running for the town clerk position. We have uh, many people running for school board. We have many people running for planning uh, board and budget committee and selectmen. So uh, it's nice to see that we have an overwhelming amount of candidates. I, I hope that you uh, search around, talk to people, find out where these people stand, get to know them a little bit. I can tell you that one of the first of hopefully several candidates night will be this Monday at the Good and Plenty, I believe at 7 o'clock. Uh, I don't know who's showing. Um, it's an email that I just got. So hopefully, if you don't make it to that, you can watch it on, on the Peg channel and really get to know these people who are going to vote. So that's my, my little vote on there. Next, I'd like to introduce the chairman uh, of the selectmen, is Kenny Paul. We have to his left, Paul Kasprzyk. Peter, Peter. Peter. <laughs> I'm going to be Chris Oates. He's had dinner and he did his plenty. Next, we have Charlie Edwards. Uh, our town administrator over here is Teresa Williams. <laughs> now, have that one with me down. Sorry. Our town attorney, the Honorable. Richard Sager. Budget Committee Chair, I'll introduce is Howie Knight, and at this moment I'd like him to introduce his board. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Ray. First of all, it's Tyler Connie, the woman who's over here, she's also on the checklist. I used to be there. Kenny Paul is our selected trip. Kenny Miller, Gabe Mankins, Asha Kenny, Ralph Long, and Jerry O'Connor. Thank you very much, Howie. Uh, Denny, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'd like to have you say a few words about that. This, uh, this is Howie's last budget meeting. He is not running for the election. Uh, he's been with us nine years in the budget committee. I think he's been the chair of eight of the nine. Uh, been a tremendous asset to this town and done a phenomenal job. I wish everybody could give him a big round of applause. Uh, and the only thing I ask, if you send me an email or something, please tell me what town you're from. Because 
If we have a contentious thing going on in Congress, we get emails from all over the country. There's no way I can possibly answer all of them, but I will answer the ones that, that are my decision. So anytime, uh, anything I can do, I don't want to take up any more of your time, but, but uh, I'm around. Uh, hopefully, you don't know how to reach me, and uh, feel free to do so anytime. And I also tell everybody, uh, if anybody would like to spend the day in Congress, I'd be more than willing to take a look. I'm going to leave at 6 in the morning and I'm going to get home before 6 o'clock at night. My name is Bill Nelson. I'm the new beat down in the morning, Johnny Cocker, and I'm pleased to follow my two at the point field here. It's been a pleasure being down there, a wonderful learning experience. Uh, I have to serve on the Health and Human Services and Elderly Affairs Committee. And it's been an eye-opener just to see the participation of people coming down to speak on behalf of the bill. Some of the hot topics we had coming just in that committee coming up this week is extended Medicare, Medicaid. <coughs> but we have uh, uh, marijuana for medical reasons. Uh, we have Copacabana, and, and one of the hot ones, not hot, but it's uh, liquid cremation. Well, that's coming up. So it's all at once from one aspect to the other, it's one of Alzheimer's committee, and it goes on and on, and then we have the regular bills that we fill on the Wednesday. One thing that I've learned from talking to Harry and talking from Joe and Dion, sometimes the bill will come up, we'll have a specific thing that you think, I'm voting for this, you read the bill on, online, and it sounds wonderful. But in the process, it gets changed. So when it comes out at the end, it can be totally opposite of what it starts out to be by amendments. So some, sometimes people say, wow, you didn't vote for the bill that I was hoping for. Well, it may have changed along the process. When it gets to the very end, it's not what you want, or it's worded in such a way that you can't vote for. So I do the best. I'll never make everybody happy, but I'll try. And I'd like Harry to ask everybody to contact me with issues. And believe me, get both sides gambling and everything else. People are putting their opinions, and I'll do my best. Put it down. Thank you. Thank you both for, for coming on tonight. I think it's important that we, we establish that, that process. So thanks again. Uh, we'll begin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the deliberative session where we will be reviewing the town warrant to be voted on March 12th, which will be held here from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. The deliberative session for the school will be next Friday, the 8th, and that will be at 7 p.m. at the Paul School. At this time, I'd like to recognize Phil Fondley, who will make the traditional Bill Fondley motion on adjournment. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that the session of the town warrant be adjourned by 11 p.m. and that no article be taken up for consideration at 10.50 p.m. In the event that all articles in this warrant have not been acted upon, the moderator is authorized to reconvene this session at a day, time, and place which meets with the approval of the majority of the voters present. Thank you, Phil. Do we have a second for that motion? Second. Right, we have seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Phil. Some rules of order that we'll go over. Please raise your hand to be recognized. Arise and state your name. And again, if you could wait for the microphones to come to you. Please direct all remarks to the chair. We will not engage in a, in a form of debate tonight. They'll come to me. That's how the discussion will go along. The person that has the floor will not be interrupted and will please limit their remarks to five minutes. We've got my little timer up here. And if you can, keep it to five minutes or under. No one will be allowed to speak a second time until all have a chance to speak on that topic. All but the zoning articles must be moved and seconded before the discussion begins. A motion to reconsider must be made immediately following the subject vote. All amendments must be submitted to the chair in writing, and there will be no more than one amendment on the floor at any given time. All registered voters should have their voting cards and a yes-no ballot. This is your voting card. And a yes, no ballot. Hmm. Wait a minute. I don't know. Uh, these will be used if a secret ballot is requested. A secret ballot 
you don't need anything else. Are you getting one? I got it. <laughs> secret ballot is done by having five registered voters request a secret ballot that has to be done in writing and obviously handed uh, to the town clerk. Non-registered voters will be seated on the sidelines or the benches. And without objection, I will dispense with the reading of the warrant and proceed to Articles 2 and 3. <coughs> articles 2 and 3 are zoning articles approved by the Planning Board by statute. They are not amendable. The Planning Board Chair John Blackwood, who with his board will answer your questions without objection. I will also allow our Code Enforcement Officer, Arthur Capello, to speak as he is not a registered voter here in town. So if there's anything that Johnny needs to defer, if we need to get Arthur involved, we'll do that without objection. Moving to Article 2. There are no questions? Article 2. Are you in favor of the adoption of Amendment Number 1 as proposed by the Planning Board for the Town Zoning Ordinance as follows? Amendment modifies Article 12, Open Space Conservation Cluster Development, Section C, by reducing the minimum size of the dwelling unit from 1,500 square feet to 850 square feet, majority vote required. Chairman John, do you want to say anything about that? Or is there any questions? We do have a question. Yes. Yes, I'm Nancy Spencer Smith, and I'm questioning the planning boards. What was the rationale for suggesting that change? The reason for it was to, uh, the intent of the proposal to change the square footage from 15 to 8, 850 is for if a person wants to put in the subdivision, they put in small homes and people can afford to buy them. Okay. Any other questions on that? Seeing none, we're going to move to Article 3, also the zoning article. Are you in favor of the adoption of Amendment Number 2 as proposed by the Planning Board for the Town Zoning Ordinance as follows? Amendment modifies Article 23E by replacing the current language in its entirety and replacing it with new standards for workforce housing in accordance with New Hampshire RSA 674 colon 58 through 674 colon 61 and to add standards for elderly affordable housing, majority vote required. Any questions on this? Yes, Nancy, again. Again, Nancy, Mr. Smith, I'm curious to know, and to add standards for elderly affordable housing, is that tied to the RSA, or is this a standard that the planning board would establish? The intent of this proposal amendment was to make workable housing easier to build. The way the current amendment is written, it makes workable housing almost impossible to build. And if the house can build vital workforce housing, the house can only be sold to another family whose income falls within the state guidelines. Yes, Angie. I'm not sure that answers my question. And our part-time planner is, is not with us tonight, is that right? Is there any other planning board member that would want to uh, try tackling the answer? Oh, Paul? Yeah, I'm the vice chair. We, uh, excuse me. Um, that's a problem with housing all over New Hampshire. Um, workforce housing, elderly housing. Uh, we wanted to make sure that um, there is housing for people. Everybody needs to live somewhere. And uh, hence the, the change. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Nancy. Oh, well, Paul, I, I still need to know the standards for elderly affordable housing. Are they standards promulgated by our planning board or are they part of the RSA? More universally adopted. That's okay. Um, well, it's also that's a planning board as well as the state. Though there are state statutes that encourage elderly housing, and uh, we are complying with the state, of course. We have to. Well, so, I think, yeah. I think what, what Nancy's trying to ask is are we using the same standards as the state, and if we are, are we adding any more to them or keeping what the state has? Am I kind of close? Uh, 
we're, we're doing what the state has asked us to do. Okay? I mean, it's, 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 it's going along with the state statutes. So my question is understanding we don't we'll need to go any further from standards other than looking at the RSA. That's right. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Any other discussion on that article? Seeing that, we're going to move to Article 4. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to be added to the ambulance capital reserve fund, previously established, majority vote required, the chair recognizes Mr. Paul. I move the question, Mr. Moderator. Been moved. Second. And we have a second. Discussion on this? This is going to set aside $25,000 to be put towards the fund. This is something we do every year and uh, for a replacement in another two or three years. Yes, sir. First time we are. $66,000. A little over sixty-six. Any other questions on this article? Seeing none, moving to Article 5. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 to be added to bridge construction, capital reserve fund, previously established, majority vote required. Chair recognizes Mr. Edwards. I move the question to Mr. Oregon. Has been moved. Second. And second. Further discussion? This, sorry. Uh, this appropriation uh, will be will assist the town in repair of the bridges that are red listed in our area. Uh, North Wakefield Bridge now is currently red listed. Uh, it's a bridge currently being worked on. As of 2011, the cost of that bridge has been $89,808 to fix um, what they have fixed, which is the left side and two wing walls. We still need to finish the right side, which hasn't been um, touched at this moment. Uh, and some box culverts, some decking costs. Uh, the cost of that is around 162000 This amount appropriated will complete the project, the $30,000. Uh, DES, uh, the amount of the appropriate will be completed across DES. Approval gives us till 2016 of November, November 2016. To complete, uh, we, re we have received an estimate from the state to repair the North Wakefield Bridge at a cost of $965,000. Um, the people, if this bridge isn't fixed, the people that live on that road are landlocked, which meaning that they cannot get in or out. So this is a very important bridge to fix, um, or it will be shut down by the state if we do not fix it. The, uh, the capital reserve current balance right now is $137,228.64. With this $30,000, the projected balance will be $167,228.64, which will give us adequate amount of money to repair. Yes, question, yes. Uh, yeah, sorry, I just have a question. Does, does the town only pay 20% of these bill bridges? And an 80-20 proportion still is it different? No, I believe that we pay it all. And we are we're, the state is requiring us to fix it to be all. We pay it all, correct. Nancy, if I can if if we use if we use the state quote of nine hundred thousand dollars, they would pay twenty percent of that, but they wouldn't pay it for I think it's eight or nine years. So the reason the reason is not a, you know the answer they don't want to pay for it. So. <laughs> okay, you have a question on that part? Okay, I'm going to step back just for a second, ladies and gentlemen. I usually read the vote from the board of selectmen and the budget committee. I did not do that. I apologize. Both Article Four and Five were the same. The board of selectmen voted three to nothing, and the budget. <coughs> Nine to nothing, both in favor of the articles I read. I'll continue on and I'll read those as well. Moving to Article 6. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate the sum of $75,000 to be added to the fire truck capital reserve fund previously established. The majority vote required. Uh, the appropriation, hold on, Ken, I'm going to read this. The, appro 
appropriation is recommended by the Board of Selectmen, three to nothing, and the recommendation of the Budget Committee, nine to nothing. Chair recognizes Mr. Paul. Move the question. It's been moved. Second. Moved and second. Discussion, please. Uh, the fire chief's plan in this is to replace two trucks with one truck and get rid of a tanker and an engine, both of those. One's 20 years and one is, I think, almost 40 years old. Replace two of those with one. Uh, it's probably one more year out, though, so it wouldn't be a purchase this year. It's just putting more money into the capital reserve. And the amount in that case? Currently is uh, 240000 a little over. Thank you. Any questions on Article 6? Seeing none, moving to Article 7. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to be added to the Highway Truck Capital Reserve Fund previously established. This appropriation is recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 3 to 0 and recommended by the Budget Committee to, by a vote of 9 to 0. Mr. Kasten. I'll move the article. Has been moved. Second. Second. And second. Discussion, please. We have a, an aging fleet of vehicles down at the highway department, and as you know, they're well worked. They uh, get their fair share of uh, time on the road. Um, several of them have the salt fed through the center of the body, which has taken a toll on some of the frames of those vehicles as well. The vehicle that we're looking to replace next is a 2000 model, Kenworth, and that's the next one slated to be uh, traded in in 2014. The cost ranges on a new vehicle goes between $150,000 and $175,000, maybe give or take a few pennies here and there. Right now we have about $137,000 in the account. We're looking to add the $50,000, which would bring us up um, almost to where we need to be. Actually, excuse me, I'm reading the wrong number here. We've got $93,000 in the account, which would bring it up to around $143,000. The vehicles are aging. The, the, the crew down there, we've hired a new mechanic this year. Our new road agent has been working uh, hand in hand with the new mechanic, repairing the vehicles. We've repaired the frame on one of them. Next year, I believe we're talking about replacing the frame on another one. And the problem with the frames are they're, double, they're, they're called double frames. And the salt tends to get inside the double frames and rot it. Uh, the new versions of these vehicles they're making have the salt being dispensed on the side of the dump car and over the wheel area instead of down the middle through the frame and all the in, you know the parts in between and the hydraulics. So we're hoping to re start replacing some of these vehicles in a few years and um, update the fleet a little better. Any questions on this article? Seeing none, we'll to article eight. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate sum of $32,000 to be added to the Invasive Species Expendable Trust Fund previously established. Majority vote required. The Board of Selectmen voted 3 to 0 on this in favor. And the Budget com Committee voted 8 to 1 in favor. Chair recognizes Mr. Paul. Um, we've been approached by, it's up to seven different lakes now that come in and ask for money for the monitoring and, and uh, control of invasive species. Uh, once you have that in the lake, it's very difficult to maintain, get it out, and it's uh, the basis of our whole tax basis in this community. Uh, currently in there is uh, 14000 Kenny, could you move that article for me? Oh, sorry about this, sir. Move the article. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Any discussion from the audience? Yes, sir. Uh, just wondering, uh, Fred Elliott, by the way, uh, just wondering how much money from state agencies we receive okay. that is totally just all from town. That's all from town, nothing from the state. And just to, just to be clear, Kenny, we used to get some money from the state, and that has stopped, is that correct? Did, I don't I don't. I don't think we ever got any money from the state. Um, the Board of Ponds received some from the state of Maine because of uh, Maine has a, um, a tax on their boat registration. Okay. Ralph, did you have something? I think I get an answer just now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> any other discussion or questions on Article 8? Seeing none, we'll Article 9. You know. Yes, I'm sorry, Paul. Paul, Paul Winkler, um, just a question. We have one person that voted against this. I'm just wondering what the rationale was to vote against this. I don't remember who it was. You don't remember who it was? Anybody have any idea? No? 
could have been me. <laughs> it might have been me. Okay, just so sharp. Can can I can I explain why I would have voted against it? Um, I probably would have voted against it because I think it has other uh, federal funds tied into it. So that's that's that was my rationale. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving to Article 9. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate sum of $28,859 to be added to the Police Cruiser Capital Reserve Fund previously established. The Board of Selectmen voted 3 to 0 in favor. The Budget Committee voted 9 to 0 in favor. And I recommend Mr. Casper's Yeah, I move the uh, warrant article, please. It's been moved. Second. And second. Discussion. Uh, we've as with the highway department, the police department puts on a lot of miles on their vehicles. Uh, we've got a fleet down there, and each year we try to replace one of the vehicles. Uh, they're no longer putting out the Crown Vicks. They switched to, uh, I believe we're using Ford Taurus now. And the department tries to rotate these vehicles every six to seven years. Um, usually they're up around 140, 150,000 miles when they try to get rid of them. Um, we know that the police department needs dependable vehicles and um, need to have them updated to keep them going. Uh, any questions on that? How many vehicles do we have in the fleet? I think we have about five. I'll, I'll re refer to uh, the chief. We have six. Six. Uh, we have an AC Okay. Sorry about that, Dave. AC or animal control. Any other questions on Article 9? Seeing none, moving to Article 10. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $48,015 to be added to the Technology Fund Capital Reserve previously established. Board of Selectmen voted 3 to 0 in favor. The Budget Committee 9 to 0 in favor. The Chair recognizes Mr. Edwards. Move Article 10. It's been moved. Second. And second. Discussion, please. Uh, this fund is for the replacement of computers, servers, and routers, and all updated uh, to update all the software in all the town buildings. Uh, this year, most of the funds will be used to update the accounting software. Um, we are using software that's time way back, and we uh, I do believe in these. Um, so we need to do something with that. Uh, currently, we have a balance of twenty-eight hundred dollars. $2,866.12 in the uh, um, in the fund, and we're projected to have $50,881.12. Um, and this software is very expensive to uh, replace, so we do need that to uh, bring us up to date. Thank you. Any questions or comments on that article? Seeing none, we'll move to Article 11. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 to be added to the Town Hall Improvement Capital Reserve Fund previously established. Board of Selectmen voted 3 to 0 in favor. Budget Committee voted 9 to 0 in favor. The Chair recognizes Mr. Paul. Move the question. It's that okay. Did I hear something? I'm sorry. Yeah. Second. Thank you. Discussion? Uh, this is going to go into the fund for the town hall improvements. Currently, we have a contract going out to bid um, for, for implementation for construction that's supposed to start relatively soon. It's going to be the installation of a fire sprinkler system in the whole building. We were had the intentions of uh, upgrading the insulation, repainting in here, upgrading the lights in here. Uh, it went way over uh, what we were hoping it to be, so this money could help uh, finish that project once we get started. We downsized it just to mainly get the sprinkler system throughout this building. Any questions on this article? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move to Article 12, please. See if the town will vote to raise an appropriate sum of $2,000 to be added to the Cemetery Maintenance Capital Reserve Fund previously established. Selectman in favor, 3 to 0. The Budget Committee in favor, 9 to 0. The Chair recognizes Mr. Edwards. Article 12, it's been moved. Second. And second. Discussion? This uh, appropriation will be used to offset the cost of any repairs that is needed to be done at the town cemeteries, um, such as tree removal, um, you know, removal of anything caused to damage to storms or anything like that, or, or anything that could occur. Um, 
or has it uh, currently we have a balance of $2,114.05. Um, I have it as 1000 here, so I got them a little off. Uh, projected balance would probably be $2,114.05. Thank you. Any questions on that article? Article 12. Seeing that, moving to Article 13, to see if the town will vote to establish a capital reserve pursuant to RSA 35-1 for the purpose of drilling a well, building a pump house, and utility shed at the new town cemetery, and to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000 to be placed in said fund, and further, to appoint the Board of Selectmen as agents to expend majority votes required. Selectmen in favor of this article 3 to 0. Budget Committee in favor of this article 9 to 0. I recognize Mr. Edwards. Move Article 13. Um, I'm going to refer this to Phil, but this has been changed just slightly. Yeah. Uh, this article uh, was originally put in. Uh, sort of hastily and after after uh, some discussion with the rest of the uh, trustees and other people, we've decided that we would like to make an amendment to this article. Uh, so let me read the article as amended. Uh, to see if the town will vote to establish a capital reserve fund pursuant to RSA 31 colon 1 for the purpose of creating a water supply, that's one of the changes, irrigation lines, and a utility shed at the Newtown Cemetery and to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000 to be placed in said fund and further to appoint the board of selectmen to add uh, as agents to expand. I'll second that. Okay. The amendment has been moved and seconded. To be clear, folks, and, and Phil and I have discussed this, it is removing the terminology of drilling a well, correct, Phil? That's correct. And everything else in the article stays the same. So right now we will be voting on the amendment and the amendment only. Any questions? Yes. Doesn't I thought we talked about water supply instead of drilling a well? I mean, uh, we're, we're, we want it to be a little bit more flexible. Uh, maybe uh, instead of drilling a well, we might want to put a tank down here and have a holding tank for water. And uh, drilling a well might not come until you know five or ten years from now, but. I think we were a little hasty writing the article to, to say it, to say it uh, a dug well or a point well. Uh, so we were trying to be a little bit more flexible in, in what we can do down there. But can you give me the language instead of drilling a well that you were uh, proposing? We're changing drilling a well to creating a water supply, irrigation lines, and utility shed. Okay. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Once again, removing the term drilling a well, we'll be voting on that amendment. <laughs> Any further discussion? Yes, Nancy. I just have a question. How many people are there now? Nine. Uh, we have one person. Very dear. But well, we're ready for we're ready for business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering about the reason to have water down there. I mean, the folks that are there, the folks that are there, doesn't need water anymore. Um, and I don't think anybody's going to need water. So is this just a beauty to, to beautify the ground? Is that the idea? Yeah, it is. We have some irrigation lines already in place and in the ground. And it's, it's mainly to have water for people to come to visit their loved ones. And if they bring flowers, they'll have water there. Like, like down at the Lovell Lake Cemetery, so they won't have to bring their own water. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. We're going to take the vote on the amendment only. All those in favor of the amendment as read, please say aye. 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 And those opposed. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Can I ask counsel a question? Mm -hmm. So it's a wording change. The budget committee has to vote, correct? Uh, no, the, the amount hasn't changed. Okay, good. So we don't have to vote. Right. <coughs> okay. Moving to Article 14. 
Which one? The see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of twenty thousand dollars to be added to the parks and rec. Um, excuse me, parks and recreation park and field maintenance capital reserve fund previously established. Board of Selectmen voted in favor of three to nothing. The budget committee voted. It looks like eight in favor with one abstention. The chair recognizes Mr. Edwards. Move out for 14. It has been moved. Second. And second. This one, please. Uh, this, uh, this is just what it's stated in the Warren article. For, it is for maintenance. The uh, left side of the semen field has, has been having a lot of problems with divots and depressions in the field. Uh, the surface of, uh, is very uneven and leaves everyone that uses this field to a, a big high risk of injury. Um, we believe that uh, being caused by wanted drainage problem. We've spoken to many people who have done this work on fields and they all agree. Uh, we need to strip the room, rescreen the room, level, add some drainage, and reloom and hyperseed. The drainage is probably as simple as adding a couple of French drains. We have done this on the other side of the field uh, quite a number of years ago and we do not have any problems since. Now the problem won't be enough uh, to uh, now this problem won't be enough to do what we want to. Um, it may it may have to wait wait another year. We are looking for a few fundraisers to offset some of the cost. Uh, we don't get uh, we did get an estimate to do what we are looking to do, and it came just under hundred thousand dollars. But we, as the town and the rec department, feel that it can be done for much less than that. Uh, in the meantime, this field may be shut down for use. Um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be looking and inspecting it in the spring to make that decision. We do have 110 adults playing softball on these fields in the summer. We have 100, over 100 children playing soccer during the week and on the weekends and have up to 200 kids playing baseball and softball. Um, all of these are using these fields and, and the other two are taken up by other teams. Um, these fields uh, mean a lot to these kids in town. So, um, you know, my, my thoughts is definitely that uh, there's, there's a lot of kids that play on these things and if they're unsafe, it's, well, you know, it's our responsibility to, uh, to make them safe for all kids. So, uh, um, I was definitely in favor of that and so was my uh, the two selectmen on that. So, if any questions for that? Uh, current balance is yeah. zero. It's zero. Um, again, like you, like this is written from uh, Box Director. Um, you know, it's definitely not enough to do the whole thing. But um, we've talked, and I do believe, with some participation with, with some of the town people that have office, I believe that it can be done for a lot less than what the someone that has been in the whole project. Um, so the, don't let the hundred thousand dollars scare anybody. I think a lot of this can, is going to be donated. They just need some to shake this thing up. There's some potholes down in these fields, and the kid running to catch a ball by looking in the air is going to get one of these and break its leg. Um, so we don't need that. Um, and these kids deserve a, a nice recreation. Mr. Blackwood. <laughs> What's the area at Anchorage? I don't know, John. Um, I, I would not know. I should know, but I don't know. It's 350 feet uh, wide by about 420 feet long, that area that they want to repair. there. Uh, 420 feet long, 350 feet wide, I think is what I just said. So we're going to help this. Kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, the kids are expensive. <laughs> you all know that if you have one. <laughs> Any other questions on this article? Seeing none, we're moving to article 15. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,750 to add it to the Emergency Management Capital Reserve Fund previously established. Board of Selectmen were in favor of 3 to 0. Budget Committee in favor of 9 to 0. The chair recognizes uh, Mr. Barton. Move the question, please. It has been moved. Second. And second. Discussion, please. 
This uh, was normally just in the uh, budget itself. A few years ago, we established the capital reserve because so it could keep building. Um, the one to two thousand that was always in the budget. If we really had a major disaster, that wouldn't cover anything. So we're hoping to get this up to ten thousand or so, and then we'll at least have something we can work with if uh, we have an issue. Currently, um, five thousand four hundred ninety-eight dollars in it. Questions on this? Seeing no questions on this article, we move to Article 16. I have a question. I'm sorry, Paul, I didn't, I didn't see you. Uh, question. Emergency management, what does that encompass exactly? What are you worried about? A, star, a snowstorm? Or what it could be anything from the ice storm we had in 98 to the tornado that just barely missed us by a couple of miles a few years ago. Um, it could also encompass uh, pandemic flu, anything that we need the emergency management director to take care of and address. It could be cots getting set up with temporary housing or actually um, maintaining something out in the, uh, in the area. So a lot of that is already would be paid for anyway. We have police and fire, we have the rules. Uh, have we used that fund at all in the last... 20 years? Very little bit. Chief, do you want to speak to that at all? The police chief is also our emergency management director. We, uh, we've had some damages in the past that we could have taken. For example, I'm sorry, uh, we had some cemetery damage before that we uh, were looking for some money to fix and they have their own fund now. But uh, basically, we're looking to get it up to about $10,000 in the event that, say, a day some disaster that we needed to expend funds quickly, we would have the money to do it. It also could cover uh, overtime, we had to use that for police and fire. Uh, any expense that the selectman deemed was attributed to the emergency, we would use those funds for. Yes, sir. Yeah, I can answer that too. What the chief said, we have used it. The snowstorm that knocked out the power for four days. I think it's more yeah, it's right. Right. Well, we thought we did it. We, yeah. we actually took it out of some of the food and some of the town funds as a part of having a designated fund. And having a designated fund, if I get large enough, we might be able to recoup it from the federal government. But, but also, it doesn't take away from the budget because it's an emergency and we use it only when we need it as opposed to appropriate and not Extraordinary. Yeah. I think, Paul, that uh, by not spending it is a good thing also. Yes, Kenny. Uh, also, that money cannot be used on private property. No. Do you have questions about this? Okay, we Article 16. Peter, you're saying I, have a different, I need a different number for this article? The numerical number in this uh, description is accurate. The, the written word is not. On 16? That's on 17. It's on? We're on 16. Oh, 17. 17. 17. 17. We're on 16. Well, it's right. I'm saying the next one coming up. Okay. I thought it was definitely ahead. Yeah. Moving to Article 16. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate sum of $2,000 to add to the Forest Fire Management Capital Reserve Fund previously established. Board of Selectmen were in favor 3 to 0. Budget Committee in favor 9 to 0. The Chair recognizes Mr. Paul. Oh. Move the question, please. Been moved. Second. And second in discussion, please. Uh, we established this fund the same time we did the emergency management, take it out of the budget. Uh, when it's in the budget and we don't have a major forest fire, the money can be spent in other areas. Uh, this sets it aside just for that. If we do have a major fire, forest fire, um, it'll be there to be used. And again, we're trying to get it up to around that 10,000 range. And then we won't have to keep appropriate, let it sit there and interest can build on the accounts. Any questions on this article? Current balance on that one, Gary? 
Uh, $3,110.13. Okay. Thank you. Moving to Article 17, Peter, I'm, I'm tracking what you're saying here. I've got it. And the actual warrant article that I printed offline is correct, so I think we'll be all set. Article 17, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,136 for the purpose of purchasing an updated video camera system for the use in police vehicles. This appropriation will be offset by a 50-50 highway safety grant. The town's portion of the appropriation will be $2,568 and is contingent upon the receipt of the grant. The selectmen voted in favor of 3 to 0. The budget com committee voted in favor of 9 to 0. The, the chair recognizes Mr. Kessler. I'll move the article. Is second. Move? And second. Um, Right now we've got one cruiser with a video, the old video cassette style recorder in it, and uh, we've updated two other cruisers to being digitally recorded. I think a lot of you have ever watched any police programming or anything like that, you'll see the, the uh, dashboard mounted cameras which are used in courts a lot of times and really aid the officers and also aid the um, whoever's being pulled over in, a, in the courts. So uh, right now we're trying to get one more. We, uh, the chief likes to have three cruises outfitted um, with these video with the video technology, and so we're trying to update the final cruiser with the uh, digital camera. So that that's where that money's coming from. And as um, Dino mentioned, it's a 50/50 grant. So we're raising and appropriating the five thousand one hundred thirty-six dollars. The government will um, come back with a check for $2,568. And this uh, whole project is based on the fact that we do get the grant. We're not going to do it without the grant. So Peter, just to be clear, we will raise $5,136 and the government will put the check in the mail. Is that what I'm hearing? So that's my understanding. <laughs> Checks in the mail. <laughs> I wouldn't cash it tomorrow. <laughs> Mr. Black. That camera going to be all the cruisers or just, just one cruiser? It's in one cruiser. They, they, have, they already have two cruisers outfitted. The southern cruiser that's going to receive this digital camera and the uh, DVD style recording system has currently got a VHS system type of a recording unit in it. So he's trying to update it. The clarity, everything else is a lot better in these systems and uh, they're more acceptable, you know, more widely used now. Okay. Yep. Okay, guys. Is it going to be used in the newest vehicle or the new vehicle? I would defer that to the chief. What we do when we get a new vehicle or we rotate vehicles is whenever we get the newest vehicle, we take the equipment out of the other vehicle and, and just keep reusing it. So if we got this uh, DVD, DVD recorder, we would put it in a brand new one, but we would also keep it for about 10 or 12 years and keep putting it in whichever car. So it would probably go to about three cars in over 12 years. So, if you don't get a new vehicle, is it going to go into the new vehicle? No, it would go into the vehicle that has the uh, VHS now. So, it will go in. We, we keep three vehicles set up as patrol vehicles. And so, currently, there's two vehicles that have the DVD system, and there's one vehicle that has the VHS system. And with the VHS system, if we record on the tape, then take the officer has to take the tape, copy it to a disc, and then send it to the lawyer or whatever. And uh, we do, oftentimes, it's important, but uh, <laughs> well, it's the current last one of our places is more than 10 years old. Thank you. Did you have a question? Yes, I did. When the government check is received for half the amount, what becomes of that check? It seems like we're, we're appropriating over five thousand dollars, and we're, when all is said and done, we really want to only spend half of that because the government check covers the other half. Unfortunately, with the government works, you have to appropriate the money in order to spend it. 
And so that money, when it comes back in, my understanding is it will go back into the general fund and be put back into the surplus for the next year. Does it go back to the general fund or does it go back to the capital? It goes back to the general fund. I believe, right, Howard? Yeah, this is a capital reserve. This is a grant. So it, this won't come out of the trust fund. The trust fund will come out of the a grant fund. So, but it just when the money's coming, it goes into the general fund, and at the end of the year, when we get ready to set the tax rate, this two thousand five hundred sixty-eight dollars will offset half of that expenditure, and the tax rate will be zero. $2,568. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rick, this is a, a clerical question. In order to put money into a capital reserve fund, that would have to be on a warrant article? Was that correct? Yes. yes. Okay, and then it gets dispersed to whoever the town would be. Yes, okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on Article 18? Article 17. See now we'll move to our <laughs> To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate sum of eleven thousand seven hundred and forty-one dollars to purchase a police cruiser laptop. I'm sorry, plural, police cruiser laptops and stands. The majority vote required. Selectmen voted in favor three to zero. Budget move, committee voted in favor three to zero. Chair Madison Sue Cast. Move the article. And second. Discussion. Um, right now, um, we're looking at, they have laptops that they bring in the cruisers. They're kind of big and bulky, not easily workable in the cruisers. It puts the officers in awkward positions um, where they can't pay attention to the details they need to pay attention to. These new laptops, what the, what the chief is hoping to do is set up patrols saving on gas by having um, more visibility at other locations. Instead of having the officers come back to the department to do their paperwork, um, with, with the bulky laptops, they'll be able to use these laptops in the cruiser. They'll be mounted in there. They're smaller laptops. They'll be able to actually sit out on site somewhere doing patrol and doing their uh, reports out on, out on the job site, which will, should save on gas coming back to the station. It also creates a presence of the officer at those locations, um, which will help hopefully deter any problems in those areas. So uh, we'd like to see these put into the cruisers. Any questions on Article 18? Okay, seeing none, moving to Article 19. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,920 to install and maintain a security system in the Union Railroad Station and Freight House, also known as the Heritage Center. Selectmen so voted in favor of 3 to 0, Budget Committee in favor of 9 to 0. The Chair recognizes Mr. Kastner. Move the article. Is it moved? Second. And second. Discussion, please. Down in uh, Union, we have the Union uh, Railroad Station. They're working on a blacksmith shop down there right now. Uh, the Heritage Commission has got a lot of things going on. The building that's down there right now, uh, right next to it, is a freight house. They're setting up um, model railroads in there. A lot of these products that they have are uh, donated products that are, are on loan, um, antiques and what have you, and they do need to have some sort of security system installed in this building to protect those assets. Um, I believe the security system would also probably keep a, a check on the temperatures of the building and what have you, so, you know. It's something that's well needed down there, um, considering the artifacts that they will be housing there. Any questions on this part? Yes. Uh, so I, I just got a, a question with that security system. That, would that uh, include uh, like fire, fire detection sensors, smoke sensors? My understanding is it will. I'll check on that, though, Fred. That's my understanding at this time. Any other questions on Article 19? Moving right along, we're flipping along here, folks. Moving to Article 20. This is by petition. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate sum of $150,000 to acquire approximately 121.5 acres of property on Marsh Road. The funds for the purchase will come from the New Hampshire Land and Community Heritage Investment Program, known as LCHIP, which is a grant of $50,000. New Hampshire Fish and Game 
department granted $85,000 and the remaining funds of $15,000 from the Conservation Commission Fund, no amount to be raised from taxation. The Board of Selectmen voted in favor, two to one on this. The Budget Committee voted as followed, six in favor, one against, and two abstentions. The Chair would recognize the petitioners. Um, Mr. Paul. Um, yes, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to speak to this um, petition at first. Uh, the petition stated, we the petitioners believe the purchase of property, the expenditure of taxpayer funds, and perpetual agreements should be entered into with the consent of Wakefield, New Hampshire residents, taxpayers, and voters. Therefore, based on the provisions set forth in New Hampshire Revised Stat Statutes Annotated 4114 Part A, Section 1, the petitioners directed the, the Wakefield, New Hampshire Board of Selectmen to create an article to be inserted in the warrant for the March 2013 town meeting. The spirit of the petition, I believe, was to get this on, get this as a voted on article by the legislative body. The article, when drawn up, um, it, it did, uh, the selectmen did do what the petitioners asked. And they drew up this article talking about the monies to be raised. And in this article, there's a few um, mis, uh, misgivings, I would say. Uh, the entire Conservation Commission is aware that this is an 121 and a half acre parcel. It's a 114 and a half acre parcel. We're also aware that, that um, the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department is actually the United States Department of Interior. And the funds come from the United States Fish and Game Department. Um, also, we talk about no amount being raised from taxation. When you take a parcel out of uh, current use or regular taxation use, you have an operating budget in town, this parcel becomes less of a tax value. Everybody else's taxes is going to be affected to compensate to meet the operating budget of the town. So it, it does, in a way, affect taxation. Um, there's, after this petition was um, presented and this article was drawn up, uh, there was a change. Uh, I'm not absolutely sure about the purchase and sales agreement, but I do know that the purchase and sales agreement that was signed specifically cited this RSA 4114. Um, I believe, if, I, if I'm following the email trail correctly, uh, Moose Mountain Regional Greenways has stepped up. Uh, they're taking L chip monies, um, fish and game. I guess the whole the whole deal is going forward with a different purchaser, no longer the town of Wakefield, which um, removes the town of Wakefield's responsibility out of some of the conditions that the fishing game had in their easement. But the spirit of the petition, I believe, um, should be addressed. I, I would I would move to amend this Article 21, uh, 20, um, but I'm not sure. I have a written amendment. It addresses the first part of the petition, which asks the taxpayers to be involved in this process. So I'm not sure. Um, I know that, that I should yield some time here so that, that uh, other members of the Conservation Commission can probably properly fill in this deliberative session on uh, better details of, of the current arrangement of this situation. I yield to Dave. Uh, we worked we work on this acquisition of this property for two years. Uh, every member of the Conservation Commission was in favor of it or the board of select, but we did sign a purchase and sale. As of Thursday night, the purchase and sale expired, so we actually have no purchase and sale on that property. Uh, the owner of the property, wishing to have it conserved, is signed a letter of intent that we have, and they're 
direction now is for fishing game to buy the property. Uh, Elship to contribute fifty thousand dollars, which was the grant that we applied for, and uh, the Society for the Protection of the New Hampshire Forests would hold the easement. So basically, through the different evolutions of this, the town is no longer involved. There's no purchase and sale to enforce. Uh, I have a change to the Warren article. It did not involve any town money except conservation funds. But at this point, the selectmen's hands are tied in terms of purchasing it. They have no deal. But the deal we negotiated is going forward with other parties. And I move to make an amendment to change the amount of the first line to zero. Uh, and that would make the article, that would make the article read to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of zero dollars because we do not want to have money appropriated that we can't spend that we'll be taking it. Uh, you know, it's just that no money can be spent because there's no purchase and sale. So I do make that motion. That motion has been made, uh, I heard a second? Second. Okay. It's been made and seconded. Further discussion? Yeah, absolutely. It takes away from the petition spirit. Um, this article, again, the petition had a goal, and it was to put to the legislative body a vote on this issue. I'm sorry. So once the article is drafted and it had uh, basically monetary items put on it, it didn't address the spirit of the petition. And again, I think you have a copy, Mr. Moderator, of, of the petition. The spirit was to give this to the voters. And I would like to, um, once we clear Dave's motion, I would uh, probably ask to reconsider. I, I think I know how the vote will go, but to clear that first motion, and then uh, I would ask for a motion to reconsider and present another amendment. Okay, and Mr. Fox, just so you know, I'm going to hand this down to, to uh, town council. I've read your, your amendment, and it almost seems like a separate warrant article. Um, it doesn't have any money amount in it, and I know where you're going with it, but I'd like him to review it because it, it's not reflected on this. It's more to the spirit of the petition. Okay? Is that the same one I already looked at? It is, right. Yeah. Okay, you're all set? Okay. Getting back to the amendment, um, Dave, I'll read that amendment. Okay, I have it here in writing. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, David's amendment reads as follows Article 20 by petition to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of zero dollars to acquire approximately 121.5 acres of the property on Marsh Road, etc. So, really, the two minutes change is from that first one that I had read of $150,000, he's taken that and brought that down to zero. The rest reads the same. Further discussion on that article? Yes, sir. Yeah, Fred Elliott, I, I just got a quick question in reference to uh, if the town is no longer, uh, you know, in the business of purchasing this land because the purchase and sale agreement has expired, and we have uh, obviously another interested party that is really non-town associated is actually the protection of Hampshire Forest. Uh, why would we continue to keep that article as uh, uh, an active article? By, by statute, sir, the article has to show on the warrant in March when you vote. It has to be on there because it's a money amount. They can change the money amounts. Yes, sir. In that case, when we run across articles like this, I think if we left it with just a zero, it would be confusing as all get up to the vote trying to figure out what it's trying to say. In the past, we have shortened certain amendments for a warrant article to read to see if the town will vote. Illegal. You can't do it. If we look at the other numbers in there, it's going to be confusing to the I agree. Mr. Paul. If we leave the 150 or the dollar amount in there, 
uh, there's the potential that's going to pass and we'll have the money set aside to buy something we can't purchase. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, I was just wondering. I, I understand zeroing out the hundred fifty thousand, but it's still appropriating fifteen thousand dollars out of the conservation easement fund that could be expended. So I'm just wondering if we don't have to zero that out as well. Good question. So, uh, Since the purpose of this article, oh, by the way, I'm uh, Dino Blidden. Drinks at the good and plenty later. Uh, uh, I think it probably makes sense and would still be, of course, we don't really care if this is a legal article anymore because we want to zero it out. So I would leave the first sentence with Dave's amendment, zeroing it out and getting rid of the rest of the article that starts the funds for the purchase will come from yada, yada, yada. I, I agree that does not make a lot of sense. Uh, that will be confusing to the voters in the voting booth. Most of them are here tonight. Are you saying, Rick, that it would end right where it says 121.5 acres on Marsh Road, period, and stop there? Yes. Uh, that might be a, a, I know we have an amendment on the floor. We can't amend amendments, but uh, that would be my recommendation once we're done with this amendment if it passes. An option also would be if the the person that brought the amendment to the floor was to withdraw along with the second. They could change that, couldn't they? They could. Either way you want to handle it. Okay. So yes, sir. <coughs> my, my understanding is you can't take the word down. You, you can change the amounts, but you, 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 you uh, erasing the last half of that paragraph would be akin to what we just discussed, uh, changing it to say the town will. And that is uh, prohibited by legislature as far as I understand. I'm going to field this one. I'm going to try my yeah, go. lawyer expertise. Go okay, go for it. <laughs> I believe, Dave, that right after where it says Marsh Road, everything else is an explanation of where the money would come from. But I think the essence of the article, the purchase of 121.5 acres, is still intact. You think, Rick? That, that's, that's my thought process. Yeah, we're not changing the purpose of the article. We're just zeroing it out. And... Really, all that other language just talks about money and isn't really material to the article itself once it's zero. But it's your amendment just to make it so it's, it's entirely up to you. I mean, it can obviously stay the same. You can vote on it the way you have it. But it's not his petition. Not his petition, but it's his amendment, right? My amendment is on the floor. Uh, well, I guess our opinions differ, but I'll, uh, I'll take the, the two of you. Uh, so I will withdraw my motion. And we would need our second to withdraw? I'll withdraw. Okay. And to be clear, ladies and gentlemen, this is a suggestion upon from council to make it uh, a little more concise and clear to the voter in the, in the voting group in March. And go ahead. Uh, I'd like to make a motion, as Rick has suggested, that the article would uh, end right after the Marsh Road period, as well as having the $150,000 change to zero. And I think you need that in writing, but you, we, we will, if you could just, do you have a spare copy, cross it out, and you can initial that for us? I just cross it out. Okay. That'll be the new amendment. We need a second. Second. Okay. Thank you. Okay. As uh, as these articles can sometimes do, they get a little confusing. Uh, any questions on this before we do take a vote? Do you need? My question would be: yes. Is it now the time for a motion to reconsider? No. 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 It will be after the vote. Okay. Right thank you. Vote. Thank you. And right after that, we're going to discuss. Okay. We're going to be using cards on this one. So you get your voter cards ready. We're going to be taking this side, we're going to take the table on this side over here. I'm going to read the article, so it's pretty short. The amendment to the article reads as follows Article 20 by petition to see if the town will vote to raise or appropriate the sum of zero dollars to acquire approximately 121.5 acres of property on Marsh Road. 
All those in favor of that amendment, please raise your card. Hold on, you don't need to count yet. Hold on, guys, don't count yet. All those against. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, back to the, the, the spirit of the petition, and and um, I will concede that that perhaps next year's warrant is a better place for what I propose as an amendment to this petitioned article. Uh, the amendment that I had prepared to propose is worded to see if the town will mandate the Conservation Commission for all future purchases of conservation slash recreation easements on open space properties inside town boundaries to request the select board to acquire said property exercising their authority under RSA 4114-A, including the requirement for at least two public hearings prior to the binding, prior to binding the town to any such purpose, purchase which would mean before the purchase and sales is signed. And, and further, that any such future acquisition be placed as a warrant article on any annual March town warrant to be passed by the legislative body. Because that, this amendment would be passed by the majority. Okay. Thank you. And Rick, just, just to be clear, do you feel that that, that also was it's kind of worded like a warrant article, maybe, maybe best suited for next year, or should it fit into this? Ralph and I talked a little bit about this before the meeting and I told him that uh, I would not uh, agree with that amendment to this Article 20 because it changes the purpose. So, uh, next year, whatever. The, the spirit remains, the, the purpose has been changed. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> But also for the voters at home and the ones in the audience, uh, we, we're not requesting any appropriation of taxpayer money aside from what was already voted by this body in conservation funds that we already have had for years in our fund. We did not do a warrant article on this because we weren't asking to raise taxpayer money as these other warrant articles do. And the purchase and sale was done at a time that we didn't want to disclose the terms during the time that we could have submitted a warrant article. So by the time the deal was sealed, it was a little late. We felt uh, we were okay to go forward, but I'd like a vote of confidence. And I'd suggest everybody can vote on this article, but we have to agree on what a yes vote is. And I would suggest as a straw poll, because it's binding on nothing, that the voters vote yes if they agree with buying this property and no if they disagree. And the Conservation Commission can look at that result and base our future actions on what the voters vote. But we have to agree that yes means that you would be voting in the booth uh, for this type of property, this type of acquisition in the future. Yes, Jerry. Um, well, I guess I would just like to touch on a couple of points on, on that. I guess uh, when, when we say that no taxpayer money is used for this, uh, where this money comes from is the uh, penalty on money on property that comes out of current use. <laughs> so we have property that's in current use, so it's paying a lower tax rate to begin with. If it weren't in current use, it would be generating the regular uh, amount of property taxes. So if it hadn't been in current use, it would be generating now the $11.95 a thousand. Uh, so I, I have a little bit of a problem when we say there's not taxpayer money because, like I say, just because the, it was in current use for a while, it comes out the penalties paid. That penalty is still, in my mind, considered property tax money, even though it's called a penalty, because it, it should have been paying the taxes uh, to begin with. Uh, I think the other thing that came up was the uh, vote in 2000 to have the penalty money go to the Conservation Commission to buy these pieces of property. I think at that point it was $25,000 a year to go into that fund. Uh, in 2006 there was another vote taken and increased it to 100%. 
I'm not quite sure that that is actually the carte blanche uh, approval to go out and, and keep buying land. I know that sometimes when we get into these uh, purchases of conservation land, we, we hear about buying a piece of land, putting in a parking lot, putting in a boat ramp, putting in different things and these different amenities. What happens is we seem to get the property, but we don't do anything with it. After we get it, we don't get the improvements and the amenities and things. Uh, so I, I guess, uh, you know, and then to Ralph's point, I mean, uh, people in this town really like to vote on things, and, and uh, this was done backwards because it was a purchase and sale sign in February 2012, or the closing date of June 2012. But it also had the possibility of going to the town meeting and being voted on in March of 2013. Uh, I think that purchase and sales went from a closing date in June of 2012 to a closing date in August of 2012 to a closing date in January of 2013. So there were a lot of changes and a lot of things happened with this whole deal. It may have been poor planning, it may have been mismanagement. Uh, we should have probably had a realtor involved in the transaction uh, because I think that uh, they may have been able to foresee a lot of these problems that may have been smoother. I would, I would just like to uh, say to Mr. O'Connor about the tax taxation part of that. Current use was originally set up to protect open spaces. That's why people were given the ten percent. That's why people were given the opportunity to put their land in current use. I didn't interrupt you, Mr. O'Connor. Well, appreciate no, I appreciate the same started, the, the moderator said all the comments would go to him. So. I'm, I'm, well, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Mr. Moderator, yes. current yes. use was set up to protect open spaces originally. Landowners were given a discount on their taxes to, uh, to help um, offset development. Now, when a person takes their land out of current use, they pay a penalty, and that penalty is designed to kind of get back the taxes that weren't taxed for those amount of years that the, was in current use. <laughs> if I recall right, when I was on the budget committee years ago, we had, um, and, and this whole thing came about with the conservation easement fund and bringing it up to 100%, the idea was this penalty money was received for land that was supposed to be protected, pro providing open spaces. So if that land was going to be developed, we were hoping that that penalty money could be put in a fund to find another piece of land to help offset and help conserve land opposite. You know, um, that was the idea behind that. And the other thing that I would like to say is I would like to thank Moose Mountain Regional Greenways for offering to make our account um, whole again after our expenditures that we did on the survey and on the appraisals. That was very generous of uh, that organization and it's appreciated. Thank you. Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Peter. Any other questions on this article? Just one thing, Dion. You know. Yes, sir. Is it absolutely necessary that a yes vote? I mean, somebody's going to look at that article and say, geez, I don't mind raising an appropriate zero dollars for anything. Why not? Yes. Is, is that a good gauge of the support for future purchases of conservation easements? I guess that would be to each one's opinion whether or not um, people are going to know that a yes vote would be kind of a straw poll for the conservation committee. It's going to have to play out in, in March. So I, I would recommend that we we don't use the results of this. Yes or no? They're they're seeing that the article is defunct. Maybe there's 50 or 60 people in the room tonight that know what we're talking about. There might be another 200 people that go to the voting booth on uh, voting day and not really know anything about our conversation here tonight. And I think it would be a, uh, uh, a not a very accurate way of gauging the town's um, palette for more conservation easements. So your point is basically saying just because if they vote yes for this, if they're not informed, they're not going to know that it's a straw poll. That's right. You're asking that, should that be a, a kind of a good gauge for the cons Conservation Committee to move forward? Whereas, I would suggest to you, Mr. Fogg, that your article... Um, next year. Next year. Should be placed <laughs> in. And uh, that would be the safety valve I think you're looking for for the two public hearings. Before I, anything is, uh, I, I just would hate to see 
uh, people in places of uh, importance and authority take the vote, the resulting vote from March and run with it. Say we have all the authority we need, we got a majority of the voters saying yes, and it may be 138 to 137, you know, two vote majority. If they have a majority of just bearing witness on, on past events, it's going to be that cat launch ticket I mean, go hog wild on more conservation. Sadly, human nature will probably vote for a zero amount. To get a real poll, I think if you put in any amount there, you might get some no votes. But yes, now move the issue. Okay. Then move. Do I need a second? No, no, no. Second. Fine. Okay. <laughs> We've taken a vote on the article, and I don't think we need to. No, you just move on to 21. Article 21. Okay. Article 21, I'm going to wait for my chair of the budget committee. Do you have a new number for me, sir? No. Okay. That's correct. We just took out 150. Is that that's a separate warrant article, not the operating budget? Okay. So I'm going to read this exact number then. All right. Mm -hmm. Moving to Article 21. There's no changes. Shall the town, shall the town raise and appropriate an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately. The amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by vote on the first session for the purpose set forth herein totaling four million one hundred sixty-one thousand five hundred twenty-nine dollars. <coughs> Should this article be defeated, the fault budget shall be $3,924,791, which is the same as last year with the certain adjustments required by previous action of the town or by law, that the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40-13, Roman numeral 10, and Roman numeral 16, to take up these issues of a revised operating budget only. Majority vote required. That has been approved by the Board of Selection 3 to 0 and the Budget Committee 9 to 0. Can we do a motion on that one? You need that article moved? It yeah. should be moved in second. Yeah. Okay, who wants to move that? Peter? I'll yeah. move the article. Move in second. Any second. discussion on this? This is the budget. This is the budget. Okay. I will make note. Uh, before we adjourn, the budget committee is going to have a meeting. Do you still need to have one? Yes, we do. Okay. Budget committee is going to have a meeting previously following as soon as our adjournment. Yes. Ah, uh, thank you. And we and the ladies at the table, please pass these in. We do reuse them. The ladies will take them out. Thank you all for coming out. Ladies, adjourn. Adjourn. Do I have a second? Second, sir. Thank you.